Hi everyone, I'm going to get started because I only have 30 minutes to talk to you and time flies so very quickly when you're having fun and I've just been told by Tracy that no one has gone over time today so there's no precedent and I don't want to be the person who lets the team down so I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Uh, welcome everyone, thank you so much for coming. It is my absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you today about Intuitive Agile, but who am I? Who's talking to you? Uh, my name is Dana. Dana the trainer is what they call me. Uh, you win a prize if you guess that I am a trainer, a facilitator, and I do a little bit of coaching as well. Uh, I spend most of my time in the agile space helping uh, other coaches and other agile trainers to step up successfully into their roles. So I coach the coaches and I train the trainers both on the job and privately in one on one sessions. And I am a fresh set of eyes and a new pair of hands. So organizations and teams often bring me in to help in sticky situations so that teams become unstuck. And all of that is really great, but even more important than that, you need to know this about me. I fully and fundamentally believe the words that I am going to show on the next screen. And they aren't even my words, but it's as if I wrote them myself. And when I saw them, I was very excited. It's from a guy called Scott. Does anyone know Scott? Tell me in the chat if you know Scott. I don't even know Scott. I was just browsing LinkedIn uh, last week and uh, there, oh, <laughs> someone knows Scott. I had a hand raised. Someone knows Scott, that's amazing. Tell Scott he's now famous and I, I might love him. I, I mean that. So Scott posted this yesterday. He said, uh, not yesterday, last week, he said, I'm not sure why Agile ended up with so many rules, so much angst, so much debate about doing it right or doing it rather than being it or frameworks or not frameworks. Relax, explore, have fun, play. Don't get blinded by gurus. Don't search for the one through true way. Never forget think what you know is inferior. Oh my God, guys, I fell in love with Scott. It was as if I had written that myself. Uh, this is how I feel. I wanted to go back and like it a hundred times, but LinkedIn doesn't allow you to do that. I was torn between the love button and the applause button and it was great, right? I want to scream this at people so much and it's like the center on which this is built. And further to the amazingness that is Scott, I also believe this. I believe that it is possible for individuals and teams who know little to nothing about agile ways of working to start working in agile ways because at its core, I think agile is intuitive. There, I said it. I said it. My drop. I said it. Now, in order for me to figure out how hard I'm gonna to have to work in this session to convince you of that, uh, let's launch a poll, Tracy. Let's launch the first poll and see where people land on the statement. Can individuals and teams who know very little about Agile start working in Agile ways just intuitively? Well, so far, no one's gone for disagree completely. I'm looking, looking up. Oh, it we're almost split, almost split. Tracy, you can happily share now uh, what the results are. Uh, it is split, right? Some people agree completely and some people say, I'm in the middle. I agree with some of this, which is fair enough. Uh, what I would like to do today is tell you some stories that I have noticed uh, during the time of COVID right? Um, I have, by the way, believed this for a long time now, and I've watched teams do it. But something about the pandemic has meant that I've either had the time to notice people doing it more, or fundamentally, people are doing it more. I think it's that fundamentally, people are doing it more. And I want to tell you three stories today. And I don't want it to be me talking the entire time. So let's make a deal. Uh, if well, when 
I am talking and you hear something agilely, guys, I totally did make up that word indeed. I know it's not really a word, but can it be a word from now on, right? When I'm telling these stories, if you hear something agilely, which is the word of the day, uh, why not type it into the chat so like we know that everyone's noticing the agilely bits of the story. Let's do that. So the first story I want to tell you is about a lady called Helen, and she has a company that's called Not About the Kids. <laughs> yes, Evangelo, agilely. Um, it's called Not About the Kids, and what she does is like a social media marketing and management kind of business because that is a thing. And anyway, I follow her on Instagram. And Helen, who's on the slide, she owns, runs, and manages this company. And by the way, guys, no surprises, she has one of the most beautiful Instagrams I've ever seen. It's super colorful, like alive. And every time I go on her page, uh, it just overwhelms me how pretty it is. But that's a business, so I guess she would. Now, it may have escaped your notice, but during the pandemic, limited company directors weren't really given any government financial assistance, right? Uh, unless they decided to furlough themselves, etc. This is in the UK, where Helen is based. And it wasn't an option for Helen, so she decided not to do that, and instead to take her offerings online which is great because it's a social media company and it's mostly online. You would think so anyway, but actually before the pandemic, Helen made <laughs> lots of her money uh, from delivering face-to-face -face trainings online, right? She did like whole day or half day sessions, sorry, in person. She was doing these in person right? Uh, but then there was COVID and she couldn't do that anymore. She needed to tailor her offerings for the new online landscape and she needed to decide what to offer, when was best to offer it, how to offer it, all of that stuff. And it was completely uncharted territory for her. She did not know the answers. And that is when I started to notice a change in Helen's Insta stories. And before I tell you what the change is, guys, if you hear something agilely, tell me, yes, right, agilely, which is great, but tell me what's the agilely thing that you heard while I was talking. Okay, so Helen's Insta stories started to look like this. She was straight up asking people, going to her customer base, asking them what they wanted, right? So what do they want and what they would prefer from her? And Helen was not being an asshole. This is really important. Guys, an asshole is someone who asks for your opinion and then does the complete opposite thing. Helen was not that person. She was asking for people's opinions and then she was totally going and building those things. Like literally, you would vote on something this week and then by the next week, Helen was launching that thing. She was pretty much doing it one week to the next week, right? And because she was actually taking action based on people's responses, and everyone could see that, people started to respond to her more and more. She grew an intense following, right? Um, now, you're probably wondering how she made money. Well, Helen had like a 45-minute free teaser sessions, right? And she actually was able to use these as like a testing ground. So she would offer them for free and then she would get uh, people's feedback in the session. And then she would use that feedback to refine the offering and build more on top of the offering and see what else uh, people wanted uh, in order to shape it. And by the end of maybe a month, a month and a half, she had almost like a suite of little mini courses each one building on the previous one and linked to the one that went before. So she was able to completely transform her business in uh, a short space of time. So let's see what the chat says about agile stuff from Helen's story. So we say she was getting feedback. Thank you, Myreg. Uh, inspect and adapt, it says Toby. That's agilely, totally. Uh, feedback again, the backlog being shaped by stakeholders. Indeed, we had some talk about MVP. 
It was uncharted. Thank you, Evangelo. She was directly asking the people she served, testing, getting feedback, refining her offering, etc. And what is interesting to note is that Helen had never heard about Agile before I asked her about it in our little call that we had. Okay, so that's story number one. Next, I want to tell you about Sing and Sign. So let's launch the second poll and see where people are. Thank you. Uh, the poll is going to ask you an important question. Guys, do you think that babies, toddlers, children under the age of two can communicate using sign language? Do you think that that is a possible thing? I feel like there are lots of parents on here because everyone's gone for the yes so far. Everyone's gone for the yes. Uh, but actually, I did not know this. So how you guys have that secret information, I don't know. Uh, but I didn't know that until very recently. And even when I was told about it, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, this is a crock. I don't believe it. It absolutely is not a thing. And they're making this up. Uh, but now I am a believer. I'm a believer because I'm a mom of twins. Guys, I did not need an excuse to put my twins on a slide. I was going to work them into this whole thing anyway, because I'm a proud mom and that's what I do. Uh, and they are now 16 months old. Here they are last week up to some shenanigans. Uh, but most importantly, they can sign, okay? They can do sign language. They can tell me when they want more of something, if they want to eat something, if they want to drink, if they're all finished, they sign to me. And I know there might still be some non-believers out there, so I did put videos of them signing on my Insta stories today. So you can go and check those out after if you still don't believe. And the reason that they can do this is thanks to a program that is called Sing and Sign, which I signed them up for where they were babies, right? So it teaches the art of sign language. Now, pre-COVID, uh, we would run these in sit-down classes. So you'd be in a church hall or a meeting room or a library or whatever, and all the kids would be running around like crazy, right? Now, what's interesting to note about Sing and Sign is that they use a franchise model and there are like 135 franchisees. Each class has like 15 kids and they're running multiple of these a week. That's a lot of kids, right? So they have quite a large market. It's huge. Uh, obviously guys, kids do not care about social distancing. So uh, they couldn't do it, right, in the lockdown. So what did they do? They can't just stop making money. They're reliant on the money. What do you guys think they did? You can tell me in the chat. What do you think they did to be able to make money during the pandemic, given that they couldn't run any face-to-face -face classes? <laughs> David said they sold their kids. <laughs> I'm so glad uh, that I asked these questions. It's amazing. Those were totally valid options. And who knows, I would have probably signed up for all of those. Uh, but what they did actually do was go for a blended model. So if you have kids, uh, younger ones, when all of this started going down, everybody went to Zoom and it was Zoom only. But these guys are a little bit different, right? They have, what should I call her? The queen bee, the head of Sing and Sign, the foundress, that's the word I was looking for. And she had a very particular vision, right? She did not want to do Zooms only. She wanted to launch a suite of videos capturing Sing and Sign. So a term of Sing and Sign has 10 weeks. And every week of those 10 weeks, you sing different songs and learn different signs. She wanted to record each one of those weeks of lessons and launch them one by one. So um, they told us <laughs> that every Monday we would log into this portal and there would be a new lesson there. And so they had a week to make the magic happen and pull every video together. And I'm talking about a week to do the filming, to submit them, to get them reviewed, to do the editing, 
uh, all of it needed to happen within the space of a week. <laughs> and I'm getting some agile comments coming in. Now, what Sasha did is because there are 135 uh, of these franchisees, she split them into smaller groups with each group being responsible for specific elements that had to go into the video in a particular week. So here's Kim. Uh, she is my particular sing and sign teacher saying, we had a very set deadline, but we kept saying to ourselves, we don't have to get all 10 videos done at once. We just have to keep doing them one at a time and stay one week ahead. And literally that is what they did. So the first week, guys, things were a little bit, what, what do I want to say? Things got better over time. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but remember, in the first week, everything was new, right? It was new for those who were recording. It was new for the head office team who was doing all the editing. There was some room for improvement. But here's what I love about the Sing and Sign team. They knew that. And so what they did was they aggressively reached out to us to get our feedback and tell them what needed to be done. So for the first week, there were some things like uh, the sing and sign teachers, their hands weren't in frame all of the time. So I gave that feedback, never had to give it again, right? Uh, they heard it one time and from that point onward, it was sorted. Uh, people started saying things like, can we have the sign of the week show multiple times? It was done. It was like you asked for it. If it was a solid improvement, it was incorporated into the next week's video and so on. But what is incredible is that every week, the team got better and better at doing this. So like by the third week, things like this were appearing between the videos to tell you what's coming up next, what would be the next section. And then lo and behold, one week, Sasha was there, she was singing about birds and cars, and a car drove across the screen like an animated car. So Along the process, these guys were learning, they were getting better, they were able to add things that maybe we would not have asked for because we didn't know that that was a thing, but they were able to figure out how to do it. Guys, anything agilely in that story? We have lots of comments there. Sprint goals, some just-in-time delivery, continuous improvement, actionable feedback, continuously iterating. Exactly. Okay. And I don't know if you remember the quote that I started with, but when I spoke to Kim about it, she said, is it like Prince too? Right? So she had no idea uh, what Agile was. Which brings me to my very last story, which is about a company called Travelpick. And I spoke to Stuart, who's the HR business partner, and he said, Agile is what the tech guys in product and engineering use for the system. So Travel Perk is a little bit different, right? They actually know what Agile is because there are people within the organization using it, but not everyone was using it. Now, I wonder if anyone has heard about Travel Perk uh, Tracy, I think there's a poll that asks people, what does Travel Perk do? You can maybe try and guess from the name. Will you launch that one, Tracy? What does Travel Perk do? If you had to guess with a name like Travel Perk, what are they doing? I always put that last red herring in and I know someone is going to click it. Okay, so I gave you three options. Uh, the correct answer is actually the one that no one went for. They manage, that was a bit of a trick one. That was a mean one. Tracy, I was a bit mean with that little question. What they do is they do like the travel and expensey bits uh, of business travel. So you know like how your firm might have a travel and expenses portal and they put in what the policy is and then you can go and book your flights and travel and then expense it back to the company without having to pay for it yourself, what's in line with the policy and then get approvals if it's not with the, within the policy. That is what they do right? So that's what Travel Perk do. 
and they came to my attention during the pandemic for a really interesting reason, which is totally not related to Agile, but just bear with me because I have to tell someone this story. So they have offices in London, in Barcelona, in Berlin, in the US, there's like over 500 of them who work for this company. And when the pandemic struck in Barcelona, they had to go into lockdown and it was a serious lockdown, right? Serious business in Barcelona. And so their team did a Google Doc, asked people what they wanted from the office, and they had 48 hours to get this stuff to people in their home so that all the people could work from home. They went into the office, they labeled up everything. You could get your chair, your monitor, your desk if you wanted it, mouse, keyboard, like the whole kit and caboodle. And they rented trucks because people were panicking and not really working. They did it themselves. They drove around to everybody's house in Barcelona, like totally delivering uh, stuff, right? Thank you, Paul. It was agile because they are responding to change, but they have an even better agile story than this one of them driving all over the place like crazy people. But now you know a little bit about who they are, right? Um, so their product and engineering teams, like Stu said, uh, use agile ways of working. And by the way, guys, they have designed all of their offices to be like these kind of really cool collaboration hubby type places for innovation and collaboration. And their office is like their hub space where everyone comes together. But then there was COVID and they couldn't do that anymore. So these are guys who think that agile is really only for tech but then there was this Stu said we realized that it was important to check in with each other every day it just made sense to come together as a team very briefly to talk each day right and so they did right they didn't have a cap on the meeting they just wanted to have it every day and they did it first thing every day then he said, we had so many things going on as a team that it just made sense to group those things into projects. And then the people working on the projects could update us on them sort of every two weeks in a meeting that we had together. And he gave hiring to me as an example. So a group of roles that we were recruiting for, right, could be a little mini project. And in two weeks, they would expect some kind of progress, right? Has a job description been built? Has it been circulated? Has the role been advertised? Did you get some CVs in, et cetera, et cetera? You should be able to update on that in two weeks. And then the icing on the cake was this one, right? This was new to us. So we kept thinking about how we could be better and work better and then deciding together which changes to make as a team to help us be more effective. So they started making decisions as a team about how often to meet, how much should be in a project, the best formats, the best durations. They were building it all together as a team. And so you guys heard responding to change, stand up, sprint reviews, time boxing, retrospectives, inspect and adapt. There was a lot of agile stuff going on there for a team who says agile is just for the tech guys. Now, what I noticed as well when I was talking to Stu is that behind his head, he had a little visual task board, right? Um, and he said that he had heard about Trello before, uh, but he didn't really like it. And so he wanted a way to visualize. And that is what worked for him. Indigit says, where's all the fights over frameworks? And that's my whole point. And that is why I started with Scott's post, right? Does it really have to be that way? And so now story time is over. I have a question for you. And the question is, are we attributing all of this to COVID? So is COVID the reason why all of this happened? Are we giving COVID the credit? Uh, and I'm asking this question seriously because when I first started speaking to my friends in the agile space about this, uh, they were like, yeah, it's probably just like a pandemic -y thing. It's not going to last. But I honestly feel like people have been doing this all along. So what do you think? Do you think the pandemic has given the right conditions for people to start thinking about uh, being agile, working in a more agile way? Do you think that 
once the pandemic is over, this is going to go away? Or do you feel like companies can do this, like independent of framework? And like Indigit said, without the fighting over framework and all of the argument and the angst and all of that that happens. I would be interested to know your thoughts. I'll wait and see what comes through in the chat before I say anything else. Yeah, Paul, I agree with that. So Paul is saying that current circumstances have made it more of a priority to get things to work, right? So now it might be more of a priority, why, which is why it's front of mind for people. Anyone else? Is it going to go away? Same from Myrig, guys. That's how it's pronounced, Myrig. I asked him. Okay, he uh, says that lockdown has accelerated the need to change and adapt. And Gita says uh, that the chaos of COVID and things happening fast gave people the freedom to act on their intuition. And I totally agree with that, right? Um, I think like sometimes you have too much time to think about things. Uh, and so you're agonizing over every decision and what's the right thing and what's the right way. But maybe it was freeing for people, right? Indigit said that circumstances changed so quickly that you couldn't plan too far down the road. So you had to focus on the now and, and what works now. Right, Heidi is saying whoever's fighting over frameworks needs to focus somewhere more productive, and I agree with that. But for Scott to go on that epic rant, we all know that it's happening, right, all the time. Oh my goodness, a great point from Gita here, which is that it might continue if we make sure that it does. Oh God, that's going on a slide. That's going on a slide. The next time I deliver this, I might slide that comment, right? So we have to make sure that the momentum happens and that it continues. Um, Evangelo is saying that a far greater level of trust is needed now that we're working from home. And this is why things are only going to grow. Uh, yes. And also the pandemic has forced, this is from my rig, uh, changes that people had been really afraid of in the past to be forced on them. So now there aren't any options. So we have got to work together to figure out uh, the best possible way to do things, right? Yeah, survival has kicked in. Uh, we have to we have to focus on the most important and valuable thing. So. I, I agree with that. It kind of forced you to realign and figure out what really is important. Heidi is asking a great question here, which is forcing function, but not everyone acts. It encourages some to act. So uh, one particular client of mine, they were obsessed with everyone being in the office, right? Uh, so lockdown did in a way force them because that was no longer an option. So it wasn't an option and things changed in part because of that move. So I think that's what was meant by the word force, not that we're going to ram agile down people's throats. Although I have to be honest, sometimes I do feel like it, but no, we're not going to take that approach. Um, what we're saying is things, the circumstances may have forced people to see things and adapt in a different light, right? In the JIT, you are getting some kudos. Uh, for your fact that uh, we have to focus on the most valuable and important things now. So guys, I am running out of time. So my producers tell me, uh, thank you very much for coming and listening to my stories. But I just wanted to remind you where we began. We began saying, well, I began saying that I think it's possible for individuals and teams who know little or nothing about Agile to start working in Agile ways because some of this really is intuitive. And I stand by that statement. Uh, I would like to end by encouraging us all to look out for those people who are doing things differently, who are acting on instinct, because I really feel like we have so much that we can learn from them, from their approach and from the whys of their doing. I think now use your agile sixth sense to kind of sniff out those stories and to see 
what we can learn from them and how we can apply them to our own unique scenarios. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your conference and have a great today. Have a great today. Thank you, uh, everyone who's saying thank you in the chat. I appreciate that so much. Thank you very much, guys.